Hello, welcome inside the mind of Matt, and in this video, I have the Anycubic Castle Delta printer from GearBest laid out on this table. I open it up in a live stream, and in this series, I'm going to put it together. If you want to know how to put it together, because you got one of these, then make sure you watch the rest of this video. Stay tuned. Alright, so I have all the parts laid out here and I am going to dive into the manual and we're going to work together and we're going to put this together. So let's get started. So as you see, everything is uh, clearly labeled as far as all the packages from 1 to 20. So these are the parts that the manual has specified as to which parts to use on which parts so we're gonna go at it and I guess the first part is gonna be assembling the top so we're gonna take the narrow pieces and there is an orientation if you notice there's a uh, this hole in the top that kinda goes in at kind of an angle that's gonna be on the top so let's assemble these they're gonna go with some of these and they're going to go with some of the channel knots. So let's put that together. So, according to the manual, we're going to need some C16s plus C11s and some C13s and uh, the C18. Stick your C18 through, and then that'll go on that side. Do that three times. So next we have to put the pulleys on. So we're gonna need the pulleys. We're gonna need some C14 and C2, which are some screws and C14, where'd you go? I just had you. C14. There you go. So that's what it's supposed to look like. 
the pulley the bolt through it with the nut on the inside and it's pretty tight up against it and trying to get those uh, in between there it's definitely a little handy with a little wrench so I'm gonna finish these other ones and we'll move on to the next part Make sure your pulleys are definitely flowing and moving, but nice and tight. All right. Now there is one more set of the channel nut and nut they have to go on the outside of that. And that's, once again, it's gonna be a tricky little thing. Set of tweezers comes in handy. Let's get the other ones done. So fully assembled the top, it's gonna look like that. You're gonna have your pulley system with a nut and a bolt, or a nut and a bolt. Nut for, this is gonna be for where the vertical aluminum is gonna go. So one on each corner, have this, the pulley assembly, and there is a bolt here with a nut on the opposite side. And I believe that that's gonna be for locking in the, the vertical. Uh, so I'm gonna assume that this is gonna be the top. And the upright's gonna be in, coming up through that and that'll help lock it in, so. Fully assembled, let's move on to the base part. Now the base pieces are actually defined at this extra little hole here, which I believe is going to be for uh, maybe the, the wires of the stepper motor, but those are definitely the bottom. But we've got to set up two sets of uh, the uh, channel nuts on each one, and each one of these is going to get uh, two pieces on each side. And then the stepper motors are going to get attached to it. So let's start to assemble that. Alright, next we're going to have to slide these guys on and get them all lined up. Alright, so next we're going to start to work on the stepper motors. We've got to put the belt pulleys on and then they've got to be screwed into place. There. So some of these are going to be a little tricky to get at, so let's see how we're going to do it. Let's do it. Alright, so you'll need your stepper motors, you'll need the package of C6, and you'll need your three pulleys. Alright, 
Now there is a flat side on one side of your stepper motor shaft. You want to try to get one of them grub screws lined right up at that flat surface. And it does have a second one and that's just an extra holding point but make sure you get that flat part locked in with one of them screws. Now it's time to assemble them with these screws. Now these screws that hold the stepper motor in seem like they're going to be uh, quite a little bit of a headache to get at. But we're about to find out. Now the bald end Allen driver that I have here is really making this task seem pretty easy. I was able to twist the, twist the little screws in pretty much by hand and get them started. And uh, there is kind of like a slot that has been taken out of the, the uh, the molded part here it's actually an extruded plastic part but you can see that it's kind of got like a cutout and I'm able to get I'm able to get a pretty good angle at it so I'll leave a link in the description as where you can get a set of these if you're interested Okay, got two more of them to do. All right, so the stepper motors are now attached and we're going to move on to the next step. So the next part of the assembly is going to be the hot end assembly. So we're going to start, pretty much we're going to need the hot end, this part here, the shoehorn, this is going to clamp around here and then get screwed to the top and then it'll start to assemble to this part which gets the part cooling fan and then it starts to go up from there so let's uh, assemble this part of it Now for this we're going to need some C5s which are an M3 by 10 millimeter. They're going to get bolted right to each one of those. I'm going to make sure that these four which are for the so the part cooling fan is going to be downward. And the part cooling opening is opposite of where this which is going to be the extruder cooler.
Now we'll attach the park cooling uh, fan shroud. Next we'll attach the extruder cooling fan. All my wires coming out in the same direction and everything. Okay, so the head is assembled. Now we have to start hooking up the hardware to put the arms on it. So, let's move to that part. So next we're gonna attach these parts to the extruder head. Need some M3s 20 inches long or 20 millimeters long and these spacers. So take note of the actual positioning of these little copper bushings. You want to make sure the flared end is towards the base, away from the actual ball bearing that's in there. Make sure these are all nice and tight, but the bearing will still allow it all to move nice and freely. Now uh, these attached to another part. Let's get working on that. All right, now the top parts of these Require a little bit of uh, finagling. First off, you're going to take a C7 and they're going to get screwed right into the top. Now, this hole is not pre threaded. So you're going to kind of have to finagle it in there for the first time. And we want it to protrude 8 millimeters. Close enough. All right, so I'm gonna do that two more times. I think it's time for a new caliber. Let's attach these to the uprights. This part holds the belt, and that's going to go towards the inside. We're going to use some C20s, which are some uh, M3 25 millimeters. Let's again note the position of the spacer. Flange away from the bearing. Little C14 nut goes inside of there.
So on page five, there's this drawing here where these C14s are little nuts that go in that little slot and then they tighten onto the arm. So it so looks something like this. Now you want to make sure that these are tight. I had to do a little extra, you know, give it a little extra, but you want to make sure that there's no play in between where it locks to that little bushing. Make sure they're nice and tight. And that part's done. According to the instructions, we're going to start putting the uprights together. Let's get that out. Now, I, there was a part on the bottom that I did forget, and I got to go back and put them in. But it's just I got to put some nuts and the the T or the some screws and the T nuts in those six slots. And then we can slide the uprights into it and then put the bottom to the top. Here we go. Okay, it's time to put these guys in. Once again, you'll have to make sure the bolts are little T nuts are standing straight up and down. Okay, so next we're gonna assemble the pulley system. Little feet hold onto the rail, and they've all got to get mounted up to these, which will then get mounted up to these. So let's put it all together. Now this tightens it, clamping down tighter around the extruder, extruded aluminum that is, and so that'll be our tensioner at some point. So next we're going to attach these to the top of the actual arm, and it's going to be like that. So we have to screw it through this side though. Now you're just screwing a metal screw into some plastic parts here, so make sure that you're not over tightening anything. But everything does go together nice and, and snug, so just use caution when assembling these parts right here. All right, that part's done. All right, so next we get to put this on the arms. All right, so next are these little stoppers that are going to actually hold the end stop on each one of the axes up top and according to the instructions you want these 30 millimeters down from the top so I'm going to install them now
All right, so next we got the end stops and they're gonna get mounted to these little things here. And we gotta thread the wire all the way down to the bottom and have it come out the bottom. So let's do that next. When installing your limit switch, make sure your orientation is right so that little screw sticking up at the top is going to hit your lever like that. I actually installed mine backwards and I had to go back through and change them. And now we get to put the top on before you thread the wires down. So once you have your end stops installed up there, wires run down through the center of your extrusion, you're going to have them poked out and you're going to have these little ends on it. And it comes with these little DuPont connectors and you just want to insert them properly so they you'll end up hearing them click a little bit. like that All right, so next we got the belt that we have to install. Now this one piece, I'm gonna have to take this and divide it into three equal pieces. Let's see how easy that's gonna be. So the easiest way to divide this into three, you're gonna grab the end, you're gonna grab a midpoint, and you're just gonna try to even them up until you get Three here, equal length. You just need to cut and cut. Three equal lengths. All right, next we're gonna install the belts and they kind of wrap around itself here, locking itself, go up through the pulley, back down through that slot, around the stepper motor, and then back up around there. And they've got little belt tensioners that go on it. So let's install the belts.
Okay, the belt's around. Now let's talk about this part real quick. This upper part is gonna go up here and kind of ride in here. And I, my belt was a little long, so I left all the extra down on the bottom because by the time the hot end hits the plate, that's gonna be nowhere near anything. So I'm leaving them a little long just in case I do decide later on to extend the height of this thing. It's still possible without having to get new belts. So, all right, let's move on to the next stage, which is going to be getting the extruder stepper motor all mounted up with the Bowden attachment onto one of the sides. Let's go do it. All right, so at this point, I'm a couple hours into the build. I've kind of taken my time and read through the instructions. Did have to go back and change a couple things. But pretty much everything mechanical is assembled. Now all that's left to do is the control board and then hook up all the electronics to it.